Hello everyone. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to actually use functional dependency to do the normalization as I promised earlier. Um, so we're going to use a work example in the um, topic support guide for the Cambridge International A level um, 929626, uh, right? Um, we're going to look at the work example on page eight in in this example, you have uh, a database for a company which is not normalized or which is in a zero NF, and we are asked to normalize this to the third normal form. So this table here has been copied here, and so we're going to apply the rules that we've mentioned so far on normalization to um, break this table from a parent table to a child table and then create a relationship. So um, if you've not watched the first video on the functional dependency, I entreat you to go back to watch that video um, since it's going to help you to better understand what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, so if, if you find the video useful, share the link. I encourage you to share the link, like it, subscribe, and let others also benefit from this particular video. All right, so I, as a promise, we'll take another work example on the um, functional dependency again using it to normalize to um, from 0nf to 3nf or to the 10nf again and um, we're going to take the um, the a level um, as sorry the as Cambridge textbook another work example from that and also normalize it using the functional dependency okay so having said that let's examine this table carefully Okay, so looking at this table um, carefully, we notice that every field here is atomic except this and that, right? Okay, so since this field and that field here are not uh, atomic in nature, we need to break it down to um, have atomic values. Once we do that, we have achieved the first rule, which I mentioned in the earlier video as 1NF. We have achieved 1NF. So after we have achieved 1NF, we're going to use functional dependency to separate the tables, right? So once we do that, anytime you separate a table or you decompose a table, you create a relationship. And basically, that is what we're going to do in this. All right. So this field here is not in atomic so nature. So I'm going to insert a field here and I'm going to insert a field here. Select this here and then I go to um, data, right? So once you come to data, you find text to columns. Select text to columns. Make sure you have the check on the limited and go to next, All right? Now we notice that we have a dash bar here between the two tables right okay um so and then this should be checked the tab should be checked so that we have um the two spaces between them right okay so we'll go to finish because that is all we need um however you notice that this here has some spaces right there and then this as well we could have applied a formula to trim that but this is not a bigger um, table so we can just manage and uh, treat it well manually okay all right so we, we have removed those extra spaces and then in this table again we're going to split this so we go to text to column make sure again you're on delimited and then go to nest now again we are not having other but we haven't spaces between the two so we just click on the spaces and finish right Okay, so we mentioned that this is a concert venue and this is a location um, of that same venue, right? Okay, so this is the venue location and this is a, um, a concert venue. So here is the agent's first name and um, that here will be the agent's um, last name, right? Okay. And so once we've been able to do this, then we have achieved 1NF basically. All right, so now that we have achieved 1NF, the next thing is to identify functional dependency between the tables. And once functional dependency is identified or within the table, then we can go ahead to 
they compose the table and create relationship. All right. So um, in this table, I'm going to highlight this here and go to filter. And to make things easier, I'm going to do A to Z. Um, and notice um, J01, JY01 is the same here. And these are also the same. If I check for RO01, it's giving me the same. SF01 is giving me the same All right, item. So it means that this is functionally dependent on that. So I have to check other fields that are kind of like functionally dependent on this again. So if I check here again, I for venue, um, those that are having repetition, I notice that this is not bringing out the same item. So this is not functionally dependent on that. If I come to um, location, these two are. However, if I come to um, RO01, I notice that the output are not the same. So location is not functionally dependent on that. Concert date is not. Um, let's look at the agent first name. Um, this appears to be functionally dependent. So to check that, all I'm going to do is go back to home, go to conditional formatting, highlight cells, and go to duplicate values. Click on OK. All right, so once I do this, I notice that these fields here are functionally dependent on this here. Now, let me explain why this and that is not highlighted. These two fields here do not, have, these two attributes here do not have uh, repetition. JS01 is just one unique item, and TD01 is just one unique item. So that's why it's not highlighted, because it doesn't have any duplicates, right? So, but then you notice that the rest are highlighted, meaning that this attribute here or this field here are functionally dependent on the artist ID. Now, since they are functionally dependent on the artist ID, I'm going to separate them from this table. To do that, you first of all copy the fields. You don't cut them, you copy them. So I copy this field and we we'll bring it into this sheet and click on enter, all right? So I open up the field and um, make sure I can see all the attributes work. Now, within the child's table, we are going to remove duplicates. Once duplicates are removed within the child's table, you can create a relationship between the child's table and the parent's table. Okay. All right. So here, I'm going to select everything here. Um, go to data and then remove duplicates and click on OK. All right, so once I do that, I notice that I have unique um, attributes for the artist ID. So since they are unique, they will serve as the primary key in this table. So serving as a primary key in this table, this artist ID in this table here, which is a parent table, will become the primary key. Now once I've identified, sorry, will become the foreign key. Once I've identified the foreign key, any other field that was not uh, a, a foreign key needs to be deleted from this table. So let me say that again. Once I've identified the foreign key, every other field which is uh, functionally dependent on the artist ID needs to be removed. So I'm going to remove this here by deleting that field and then I delete that field as well. So I delete this field and delete the rest. Now, this here is serving as a foreign key linking this child table. All right? Now, again, let's look at this to see if we have, again, other um, duplicates or repetitions. Okay? Now, again, if we look here, we notice that the venue ID has some repeated values. So here we have B, C, 1. So again, I'll filter A to Z. So B, C, 1 is having the same um, outcome or is having similar outcomes here. When, when I say similar, I mean that the attributes for concept are the same um, compared to the venue ID. So, and then I have London also repeating itself here. So that is fine. H1 is having the same thing here. And obviously, this shows that this here is functionally dependent on each other. So I'm going to 
copy this and bring it into a new table. Again, as we mentioned in a child's table, you can always remove duplicates, right? Okay, so in this child's table, I'm going to remove duplicates from this table. And then, um, so you go to data and uh, right here, remove duplicates and then do that. Okay, so once that is done, we notice that this here, again, is a unique um, attribute or are unique in themselves. So once they are unique, it means that, and this field is also unique, it means that this field here will become the primary key um, in this table, but in the parent table, this venue ID here will become the foreign key. So I'll remove this conditional formatting on the, this year. So I'm going to remove the conditional formatting from this year, um, the late rules, right? Okay, now I have done for this and that. So again, um, we need to remove this other field here. So we delete this field here. All right, so because we, we have to delete them because we already have them here, right? Okay, so now this here needs to go away. Now, this two here becomes a composite key. And once it's a composite key, it can be used to uniquely fetch an item from yeah, the date. All right, now, so let's look at these other tables to see if we have... Uh, any functional dependencies again. Now, if we look at the child table, uh, we don't have any repetition here. Um, concept venue has some repetition here, but the output here is not the same. So there's no functional dependency here. Now, if we come in here, we notice that the agent's name um, is having some repetitions. That's the um, agent first name, last name is having some repetition. And so this table here is functionally dependent on each other. So what we're going to do is we, we're going to copy this table and bring it into a new space. All right. Now, again, we mentioned that anytime you create um, a new, um, anytime you, you, you create, you split or decompose, anytime you decompose a table, you always have to pay attention to creating a relationship between those two tables. All right. Now, I'm going to remove the conditional formatting from this again. Um, yep. So, conditional formatting deleted from this table. And so, we are good to go. All right. So, uh, this is the last table. Okay, so once conditional formatting is being um, removed here, the next thing to do is to remove the duplicate. This is a child's table, so you can remove the duplicate in here. So I go to data and then I remove duplicate from in here. So once I remove duplicate, I have just three attributes in here. Now this here was removed from that. Okay, now, but we notice that the first name here is not it's not a, uh, it's not unique or it's it's not ideal for a primary key. So it need we need to insert uh, a primary key here. So we'll call this here the agent ID. Okay. So the agent ID, I'll just make it one, one hundred, and then one zero one, and then this is one zero three, uh, one zero two. Sorry. All right. So since I've created. Um, a primary key for this table here. I need to create exactly the same primary key um, in here. But in this case here, this will become a foreign key because it's in a new table. So I'm going to use this here as um, a lookup value. So I'll do X lookup. Use this as a lookup value, comma. This here can be found in here, right? Uh, I'll lock this table here. Um, by doing fn f4 or just f4 and then the value I want to return is here so again I have to lock this cell here so fn f4 because of the machine I'm using and um, 
if I don't have anything right there, it should give me an empty space. But I want the exact match, so I click zero. And so it's giving me 100. And then if I replicate, it's giving me the exact um, agent IDs. Now, once I brought in the primary key in here, I'm going to delete everything here. Now, mind you, before you do that, this here needs to be copied and paste as a value. Now, the reason why you need to copy this and paste as a value is because this here is a formula. And the moment you delete this here, which is the um, lookup value, it will affect this here. So you paste it as a value. So in pasting it as a value, we select this here. And once you do that, you can easily delete this without any struggle. Right, so I delete everything there and uh, remove the conditional formatting from this year. All right, okay, so um, now we can confidently say that we are done normalizing this table. Uh, how do you know you are done normalizing? Because again, we don't see. Uh, any functional dependency in any of the tables. If you look here, there are no duplicates. If you look here, there are no duplicates. If you look here, there are no duplicates. And then here again, you don't have any duplicates here. So these tables here have been normalized using functional dependency. We didn't worry our head about second NF, third NF. All we needed to do was to know what functional dependency was, and again, how to get the data into the table into one in it. So looking at this here, um, this table here have one, two, three, and this here is linking this table and that table. So this table here uh, doesn't have its own primary key because this is seven as a foreign key and this seven as a foreign key. So there's a need to introduce a primary key in this table. And so since this is about the concept, I'll introduce here as concept ID and then give it a unique ID. I say C0, um, C01, and then I can do C02, and then we can just go through the process. This will not give me, uh, okay, it worked, okay. So this here becomes a unique um, primary key for this table. Uh, reason being that these two fields here were used as a foreign key for this table and that table. And since this table here doesn't have its own primary key, we introduce one primary key for this table. So at this point here, let's compare whether the answers we have are exactly the same as what we have in the textbook or the support guide. So in here, let's check this here. This is a concept I excuse me this is a concept id artist um id the venue id and then the concept ID, which fault as i leave for this year right so this is the first one so done so this is the first one um we got right okay and so we are done with the first table um let's check with the second one so there's a second one um which is the sheet two. So for sheet two, I have venue ID. So venue ID, concept ID, and location. This is it. So we've done this and that. So it's left with these two. We are checking if we got exactly the same thing. So sheet one, um, sheet one has artist ID, artist name, and agent ID, which is this one here. And then finally, we want to check this one here which should be um, sheet number three. So let's check sheet number three. Sheet number three has agent ID, agent first name, agent last name, and the agent email. So you notice that using just functional dependency, um, we have been able to get the exact answer the uh, support guide gave us. So all you need to understand is a functional dependency and then make sure you achieve one NF. Once one NF is achieved, you move on straight to decomposing the table, right? Now, once first NF is achieved, the next tendency, decompose, 